So I'm here on the show field at the Concorde Elegance at Pebble Beach 2024, and I'm here with Tom Polzinski, who is the head of BMW Classic USA. Today we're talking about the 96 McLaren F1 GTR. Tell us why you brought this here today. Uh, it's our baby, right? I mean, who doesn't love an F1 GTR? <laughs> Absolutely. It's a fantastic car, BMW powered. That's why we own it. But let me tell you a little bit of story here. This, this is a special class this year. I think it's a very cool setup where they have a pairing of a race car with a street car because these, these cars were all built Absolutely. To, to go race, really. And this is this is a, a fantastic example. Yeah, and it's paired here. There's actually a road prototype right here off of camera that you awesome. can see, and they have it paired. And every every F1 is special, but this is XP4. This oh, is, amazing! It's the first time I see XP4 ever. So. Yeah, so right. this is a pretty special car. It's from yes. 1996, I believe it raced at Le Mans, right. and it finished eighth in class, I believe. Correct, yes. So the story of this car, is, it goes back a little further than that. 1995, the Uno Clinic car, chassis 01R, which was really a privateer effort, won Le Mans outright. And that was the last time that a production-based car won Le Mans. BMW Motorsport wanted to go back to Le Mans in 96, to, to get a Le Mans win for BMW, for BMW. specifically. Gotcha. Yeah. So the idea was to gain sponsorship from BMW North America and sponsorship from BMW UK and BMW France to field a two-car team. BMW North America sponsored this car, 17R is the chassis, and as a result, it has the stars and stripes yeah, on the rear part of the car. Yeah, which you can see here, which is the famous livery exactly, with the Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then 16R was the BMW France, BMW UK, so it had the Union Jack and the French flag on the rear of that car. In order to race at Le Mans, you have to do some qualifying races. And so the first race for this car was at Silverstone. It was a four-hour race, a BPR race, yes. which is what the class is here. So yes. it fits in perfectly. And it came forth at the hands of Steve Soper. If you Google, you can find Steve Soper in F1, and it's this car at Silverstone, which is very cool. Amazing. The second race was, was a Le Mans qualifier at Le Mans itself on the, on the permanent track. And it did reasonably well there. It, wasn't, it didn't need to do super well. And then a month later, it had the race. And as you said, it finished eight. It ran as high as third, but it had a radiator puncture, so that kind of slowed us down. Yeah, and I think Nelson Piquet, this is one of the highest finishes, I think, at Le Mans in any car, I believe, in this car. Yes. When he raced. Yes. And I think Danny Sullivan was here today. He was. With the car. He so was. He came yes. by to see it, which is amazing to see the driver that's on the side of the door <laughs> exactly. physically here. And he came and he was talking with the race guys that are here. Yeah. So yeah. that was a really cool connection and bring yes. it here. And he has fond memories of this car. He really enjoyed it. Yeah. It, it's interesting because it was happenstance that he was contacted and he says well I'll take the same whatever Nelson Piquet is getting I'll take that for it to drive the car and that, at that time he was already Indy 500 champion and yeah. for those younger viewers he is Mr. Spin and Win he spun at the Indianapolis 500 full 360 at over 200 miles an hour right. pointed it in the right direction and ended up winning the race he's he's Mr. Indy 500 in my books. Yeah, so, and I, and I really think this is one of the most famous cars that's here, especially for all everyone here at Pebble Beach. The amount of press this has been getting and the people stopping by to see this, we've been standing here watching, it's pretty crazy. Well, when we've owned the car since Le Mans in 96, and whenever we take it out, there is a, a flurry of activity in the internet saying where 17R happens to be. So we've had it at Laguna Seca for the Rolex reunion earlier this week. Just on show, we need a place sure. to keep it. But people were hearing about it and actually buying tickets to get to Laguna just to see, just the, to car. see the car. Yeah, it's amazing to see it here, and I hope it's going to win something today in the special class. And we'll everything see. That is here. We'll see. There's a you know there's a little fun fact on this car that's kind of kind of cool. So it, it was a BMW Motorsport entry to Le Mans, and the team that ran it was Team Bugatti. Team Bugatti liked to play little tricks on some of the other competitors because <laughs> there were several F1s entered that year because after you know clinic car won everyone wanted to enter exactly. an f1 and win so because this was a factory team he painted the the valve covers blue so that it looked like we had a special engine oh man <laughs> but the reality is it's exactly the it same the as same all car. the others it was just 
yeah, trying to psych out the competition. Yeah, so the only other kind of special F1 tidbit that I'll add is that this is not a long tail version of the GTR. Right. This is, I believe, a, a short tail or yeah. standard tail. There's a couple short different tail names. Short tail is what we yeah, normally call it. There's a lot of difference between the long tail and, and the short tail. So short tails are really street cars with a little bit of aerodynamic tweaks to it and, and some flaring of the front fenders. The gearbox is a full synchro H pattern gearbox. You have to heel toe every time. Really? It's not a racing crash box like the long tail is. Long tail is a sequential shifter. You, you just keep your foot in it never use the clutch and just bang the shifts. This, no, old school. So this is probably closer to the street car. Much closer. Yeah, than the long tail was, which is built for racing with better aero for GT1. It is is possible to convert a a short tail GTR to a street car and back. 16R, for example, was converted to a street car for a while and now it's been returned to the way it should be in my eyes as as the race car that went to Le Mans. Amazing. Well, Tom, thanks for today. Thanks for taking the time to show us this really special car. We're really excited to see it, and good luck today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So we're here on the show field. I'm here with Tom Polzinski, who's head of BMW Classic for USA. And behind me, we have the 1972 Turbo Concept from BMW. Funny story, for me as a kid, I saw this at the Montreal International Auto Show in 1974 and took a pep, you know, black and white photo of it and kept it in my catalog. So that Personal was one connection. of the things, yeah, that was one of the things yeah. that, that connected me to BMW. And to have it here on the show field all these years later is super, wow. super cool. It was cool. meant to be, exactly. especially with the GTR, which we just covered with the <laughs> Exactly. So, so this is a very interesting car. I know you've covered some of the aspects of it. Uh, lots of new technologies in it for safety. For example, the soft front bumpers here that were yeah. really ubiquitous today, but at the time this was Correct, really and I think they called them regenerative, regenerative crumple zones. Exactly, that's demonstrated by the, the larger seam there to, gotcha. to show, because it's a concept car, right? Yeah. We would never allow a gap that big. Oh no, no. Car. It had safety steering or something safety like steering, that? Safety steering, right, so in, in the past the steering column would go straight down to the gear, and if you gotcha. have an impact and the steering gear moves back, it moves, the steering will back. This one had offset with some uh, universal joints, the steering wheel didn't move in, a, in the case of collision. Normal today, a big deal back then. The other thing we noticed, it was a design and safety showcase at the time. Correct. Especially for the Olympics in 1972. Right. So there's designs here that we see today yeah. on yeah. this car, which is crazy. And it's interesting you mentioned the Olympics. There's a, there's a backstory to all of that. So Bob Lutz, who you probably, yes. everyone knows, right? He was the board member for sales and marketing at BMW from 1972 to 1975, somewhere in that area. He's a big fan of designers, and Paul Brock was the BMW designer, in-house designer. Back in those days, we used a lot of design houses like Bertone and, and Fru and those people. But we had one designer in-house, and Paul Brock is a, a superb designer. Absolutely. But the engineering side of the business was the, the one that controlled how the cars looked back in the day. And when Lutz came, Paul Brock had a chance to show his creativity with, with Bob. Originally for the Olympics, the plan was to showcase the E12 5 Series, and Bob said, nah, that's not good enough. <laughs> so, so he saw some sketches from Paul Brock, and this was what he was working on. And, you know, and as a showpiece for the Olympics, when they're in the backyard of your headquarters, this is really, really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I see, you know, in the back especially, I mean, I see cues for the M1, yes. the Z1. I yes. mean, there's quad pipes for the M exactly. cars. Exactly, yeah. I mean, and even, you know, Horacio made the connection with the two-tone paint, even right. the sky top. Right. We saw right. has a similar kind of a paint. So there's so many ties, which is amazing to see. And recently, and we never really understood why the front and rear were different. We assumed it was simply because it's <laughs> it's crumple, regener- yeah. regenerative crumple zones. But in a recent interview with Paul Brock, he said, well, I got the inspiration from the, uh, the French Air Force planes. They have the ant- wing end tanks and they paint them orange so that people don't bang into them. Wow. And so he thought, let's do it on the car. So that's how we ended up with, with this. Wow. And the blending of the paint was something they added. That's a little, you know, backstory yeah, to the... That's great the information. And the yeah. other cool thing that I read is that this actually has a radar system to yes. see how close it is to the car in front, yes. which, as we know, is are on all the new cars. Today. Exactly. Yeah. It was pretty far-fetched technology <laughs> back in that day, but a pretty impressive piece of engineering and, and overall just beauty. Yeah, it's great to see. And it's amazing to see it out here in the bright sun with the bright colors here at Pebble Beach for the concourse. Right. Right this wedge class behind us here. 
yeah. I knew all these cars from the magazines in their day, and to be able to present yeah. this on the field with with all these wonderful cars is just fantastic. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's actually the first time I've ever seen the car, and I'm absolutely blown away. That's so, fantastic. Thanks for your That's time, great. Tom. That's really why we do this. It. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You.